Hey guys, welcome back and uh, thank you for being here once again. My name is Maruka Sandu. I am studying psychology and we are here to discuss about my book, the final chapter is from my book, The Purpose of Life and the Other Theory, uh, How to Overcome your, uh, Signal Circumstances to Art. And that uh, is uh, an abbreviation for Awareness, Decision, Ability and Talent. And today we are uh, discussing chapter eight or starting chapter eight. I will try to cover also chapter nine, 10 and 11 of them um, as briefly as possible. Uh, chapter eight discusses uh, exactly the concept of the ADAPT theory. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to, if, it's, if, you, if you could see clearly the page. But um, the thing is that this concept of the ADAS theory, which comes from awareness, decision, ability, and talent, uh, is actually, I, maybe I've mentioned it before in the early videos. But it's actually a way of putting in practice and then getting to know and accepting who we are and that we are, we have all the necessary skills to move forward in life. And this requires a certain level of awareness, you know, but because there are times in life when we were so put down um, that we tend to look within ourselves and see nothing because we were taught to not see anything. And uh, no one ever saw something in us, something good, only maybe the bad or bad things that don't even exist in us. But the thing is that we do have skills, we do have talent, we do have things we're good at. We have amazing uh, gifts that can build us up and can help us come, um, go, no, and that can help us go about our circumstances in life and our difficulties. And um, this awareness comes or should come with a decision to act on those um, skills that we acknowledged and um, transform somehow, or take classes, study, do things that transform that um, ability that we now know we have into a talent uh, that we keep cultivating and that could uh, offer us an income, maybe a small business, a job, and in the same way that might be also our, our source of recharge, our go-to place when we need to uh, to refocus and to somehow regain our strength because it's, it's hard and it's in, in the same time normal in life to somehow um, discharge, you know, um, like batteries and to um, decrease our, our level of energy and motivation based on certain situations. It happens. We are people. We tend to fall, but not the fall is the one that matters, but the way we come back and we get, get back up. So in her book, as I wrote here, The Power of Difference, The Link Between Disorder and Genius, Dr. Gail Saltz underlines an interesting fact that the real disabilities are shame, fear, and believing that you're disabled. That's what, <clears throat> that's what really disables a person. There are so many examples where people turn these deficits into wonderful traits, but if you believe you can't, then you can't. So yeah, people point finger at us all the time. Uh, people 
kind of we point fingers um, at ourselves based on what other people told us. Our parents did that because that's what other people did to them and so on. It's like a never ending circle. But remembering what we talked about in the beginning about difficult backgrounds and negative emotions, it becomes easy to understand how ideas like I'm not good enough for that job or how can a person enjoy my comp company easily find their way into our mind. They work as setbacks that keep us from doing or even trying to do what we should do. So this is maybe a reference, a simple, a simple way to refer to intrusive thoughts, okay? Um, that could be stopped with rich statements like, okay, maybe the situation is not that bad. Let's see what the best part of that situation and focus on that, you know? Uh, and the truth is uh, that um, what we tell ourselves actually does become a reality. Because if you think, for example, you're not good at something, you won't do anything to improve that. And you'll be like, okay, that's not for me. Uh, I'm not good at it. And you stay there. Like you're, you won't be good at that. <laughs> that will be a reality. But instead, if you say, okay, I'm not good at it now, but I may be um, okay at it. I could practice it. You can then go take a class, of course, and improve that. Who knows? Maybe you will meet someone amazing at that class, or maybe it will be the start of a new, a whole new chapter in your life. Not necessarily romantically speaking, but just like meeting someone to whom you can connect, even in a friendship or friendship or in a collaboration of some sort. You never know. You actually never know. Okay. So um, the point is to move from the safe harbor, from the safe um, shore, okay, or um, that refugee, that escape, uh, and uh, put yourself into doing things. So the truth is that um, going from point A to point B is never easy. There are supposed to be obstacles along the way that can actually work as an escalator, providing us with a stepping stone towards reaching our goals. Another secret to, to be known when it comes to overcoming our circumstances is learning to accept a knowledge and identify the three most important assets we all have within reach. So we can do this by applying the added theory, the awareness, decision, ability, and talent. And that is true, like, as, as I said in an earlier video, through pen and paper, you have to grab yourself, uh, for yourself a pen and a paper and put all your abilities since childhood, since birth, on a paper. And then uh, try to see how um, you can transform those talents or abilities through classes or courses into um perspectives into job into jobs into um ways that you can create more for your life or that you can improve your life that you can use them um as a coping method for your traumas or even more to uh, perfect yourself and make uh, make a purpose out of them and as i said earlier to get a job make a living for example if you're good at drawing uh, you can uh, become a um, web designer or you can uh, do sketches for a living or portraits or things, uh, or you can do logos. My web design is a little bit about logos and other things. But the thing is that the other theory, it's the whole concept of it is to move forward towards, uh, throughout, sorry, throughout. Uh, uh, your situation based on, our, on the ability you already have. So the saddest conclusion I always reach when I look at people is how they are full of abilities but have a huge lack of awareness and completely ignore their own power of will and decision. Life is divided into things we can control and things we can't control. Lucky for us, what we can control is more important than, we, than what we cannot. The three main things we can control are ourselves, our decisions, and what we aim for, okay? 
So we have to learn to control ourselves, our decisions, what we want to do in life, and uh, our aims, our goals. So being aware of who we are doesn't mean only that we know our name and address by heart. Um, it goes far beyond that. Um, it goes far beyond that, and it involves understanding how each of us has been born with different skills that are aimed at helping us make a living and support ourselves as we go through our lives. So it, the thing is that, you know, I have friends with uh, or acquaintances with different challenges in their lives. And I've, got, I've come to understand somehow in general that each type of pain that we go through uh, is, um, connected to a certain type of gift that we have that can manifest it. So if you have a certain type of pain, I know trauma, struggle, whatever, I am completely convinced that you can sing, draw, or you have a certain type of ability, um, write, you can write, okay. Whatever ability, practical or artistical, you have you only have to be aware of it. And if you aren't able to identify it yourself, ask your parents if possible, ask friends, ask people around you, hey, what am I good at? You know me for so long, for so long. What um, have I always been good at? And some may say, you know, you're a very good listener. And that could connect you to the fact that you were listened to when you were a child. Now you know what to heal in you. And you, while you're healing, you can focus on listening to others and uh, participate to support groups or just uh, do some volunteering with elders or children or just put that into practice in whatever way uh, possible because it is possible and with, it will also feed your soul while you heal yourself and in the same way you're giving back or so you're paying it forward to others in a good and healthy way. I don't know if this makes sense, but if it does, let me know in the comments. Um, okay, so um, being aware of who we are, okay, it goes be, it go beyond, okay. uh, all right. So even so, most uh, times we find it difficult to gather our energy and start doing different things. In this matter, Dr. Gail Sars basically adds how part of getting your breaks is accepting a coach, accepting a tutor, as it can help you do things that uh, don't come naturally to you. As Brenda Brown said in her book, The Courage to be Vulnerable, only those who are brave enough to explore the darkness will discover the infinite power of the light that comes from within. Therefore, even if self-healing and building yourself up again and again can sometimes be a hard thing to do, it doesn't have to be done by you alone. Sometimes accepting guidance is the smartest things that you can do because you will be faster in reaching your goal as soon as you start learning from someone that has already been in your shoes at some point and knows exactly how to guide you in a gentle way to your own darkness and help you reach the next level. So, okay, you identify your, your potential and your uh, gifts and talents and you try to heal. But... The purpose is not to be just on your own. You need someone that has already been there in different ways. Of course, a therapist didn't necessarily, uh, sorry, hasn't necessarily been there precisely in the same trauma uh, that you, although also possible and you may never find out. But um, he or she has been there throughout the traumas of other patients of, or other clients. And you can um, you can truly confide and um, be assured that he will uh, learn how to guide you um, with the suitable lantern, let's say, or he will know where to switch off the light or where, where to switch it on, to put it like that. And it can be a beautiful process, hard but beautiful, and it can, Make you understand that someone can be noble throughout their uh, their job because being a therapist or a counselor is a job in the end, but it's a job with purpose, with uh, different and much more 
sustainable um, purpose when it comes to lifting the values of a human being. Okay, so you don't have to be alone in that. Uh, further, I have some uh, some uh, speeches about the uh, the ADAP theory that uh, I inserted in the book. Um, speeches were held at the Toastmasters uh, Club, at the Toastmasters Club. But uh, further, we are going to discuss about chapter nine. And uh, chapter nine says, is there a way not to take action? Now, I will um, say just a few things. I have never seen great talent without hard work. Sadly, I have seen great skills remaining unpolished and I have seen people think out loud about what they could have been if only, if only they had done more, if only they had the chance, if only they had never given up. Chances come along the way, but they have to find you working for them, improving yourself and your skills and in this way fulfilling your life. So this is chapter nine, right? Chapter nine kind of challenges you to, um, to do the hard work and to, um, to, to start cultivating your gifts. Because once you come to understand the add that you awareness, decision, ability, and talent, you can know where to start from and what you need to prepare. This preparation involves a lifelong learning process, taking courses, watching videos, reading books, developing your skills, and letting people know what you can do so that they can reach to you and know where to find you. As John Maxwell uh, states in his book, The 21st uh, you know, Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, if you have several abilities and talents, you obtain them to study and practice. If you can offer opportunities, you obtain them to hard work. If you have wisdom, you achieve it by evaluating intentionally the experience you had. The higher the self-development level you gained, willingly, the more you have to offer. As much as you continue to follow your personal goal, the more you will continue to offer. So this is why you need to understand that although these things may seem obvious at first thought, you will find out there are many good people who actually feel ashamed of who they are, amazing and talented people in contrast with low quality people, less aware of the importance of their development, who are not ashamed of acting socially proper as in showing a hostile and vulgar attitude. So the thing is that being aware of who you are and what you have to offer is a life-changing experience and not in a way of believing you are more than you are in uh, an extreme way, like a proud way, um, like, uh, I don't know, um, being arrogant and stuff like that. No, but simply uh, seeing yourself, looking in the mirror and seeing yourself and seeing what other people refuse to see. You, you see it for yourself and accept it for yourself and uh, build yourself up towards that. Do courses, read, improve, uh, grow. Grow into the person that you know you're meant to be and uh, you will find value in that. I, um, I promise you that you will find a lot of value in that. And while you do that and you start volunteering also, or start doing some things for others or getting a job that uh, offers you the possibility to help others in an area that you also need help, um, the outcome will be amazing, I assure you. So that's uh, chapter nine. There is no actually right moment. The right moment is now and the right moment is um, every day. But don't use that as an excuse to postpone everything for tomorrow. Start now, start small, but start now. As, um, as small as the start might be, but just start. Okay. Chapter 10. Chapter 10 is about silence the silencing the monster within or the inner monster. This means that um, we should try to learn to silence the voice or to decrease the volume of the voice of the people that um, contributed to our um, bringing that. Um, 
for our parents and, uh, that contributed to our upbringing. Sorry for the mistake. So that may, might be our parents, our grandparents, our friends, family, whatever. The thing is that it's not their fault that other people um, planted rotten seeds in them, let's say. So it's not their fault for how they were raised themselves. And it's not also their, their fault because they didn't, they weren't um, aware of all this because they grew up maybe in a time where all this access to information was not was not possible and um, maybe they didn't afford the certain type of education or they weren't growth oriented unfortunately they were like okay so this is how i am and that's how i'm gonna go on in life and that's it and unfortunately for some of us they put that um, on us they uh, transferred their pain onto us um, to their words, to their actions, and they hurt us, it's true. But now that we know certain things, and now that we are here, and if you are here in front of these videos, probably there's a reason for that, that you are on a path of growth and you're seeking some answers, and that's great. But, um, This, because you're on a mindset of growth, you should focus on decreasing those voices that tell you you're no good and you're useless and there's something wrong with you and all that. There's nothing wrong with you, you're okay, you're fine. The only thing that's wrong is that the volume is too up. And what you received from them is became your inner voice and uh, that could also be done, decreasing the volume of their, their voice. Uh, and their messages could also be done through some therapy or coaching. But if you do not afford the therapy or coaching, at least put some positive messages in your room, next to your bed, in front of the mirror, wherever you want, put some beautiful messages there like you can do it. You're great, you have this amazing talent and you name the talent, uh, you will manage to uh, overcome everything. All the positive messages that could uh, that you can integrate and help you uh, lower that tension, that inner tension uh, and those inner thoughts, intrusive thoughts that tell you that you're not good and that you're not okay and that you can't do it and you're not talented and all that. At least do that, at least do that, okay? Uh, the most important facts are with a little bit from chapter 10, I guess. Sorry, yeah, chapter 10. The most important fact regarding critics is that you can either build or destroy character. If you are strong enough, then it's uh, easy for you to understand what criticizes, what criticizes you to help you become the best version of yourself and who actually does it in order to bury you. Being criticized never makes the weak happier, but it is also important to know to note that the weak never gives healthy uh, never give healthy criticism to the strong one. On the one hand, it is like growing, it is like throwing rocks towards a blooming plant. On the other hand, once you become strong, you will understand that you are not the first flower growing among stones. It is important to practice courage and perseverance and to always remember that even the snow drop fights and blooms throughout the snow. Silence is a monster that is screaming at you every time you start thinking you can't do it while you move forward on the path of life. Give yourself permission to grow and always remember to listen, observe, smile, and ignore everything that doesn't help you increase your positive traits. Stand up for yourself. So the thing is here that uh, so the hardest thing here is that um, I mentioned about being strong, you know, and we, all of us are strong, especially those who went through difficult things in life. But you have to make the difference to make a difference, and uh, between um, resilience and inner strength, because how much you can take and keep on taking things 
doesn't make you strong, strong. It makes you resilient. But that means you're already strong and you're using that strength in the wrong way. Um, real strength is moving away from what hurts you, detaching from what hurts you. Um, having the power to leave a situation that hurts you and that damages you. Because you see, um, if someone, I don't know, comes towards you with a knife or with a broken bottle or um, I don't know, with whatever thing to hurt you, maybe you are strong enough to take the hits, but will you stay to be killed? Will you stay there to be killed? I don't think so. So why do we stay and get killed emotionally um, in front of people that are not aware of what they are saying or doing? And we integrate that as being our own identity, which ends up destroying us if we don't leave the situation, you know? It's, um, it's a really um, hard distinction. It's a really hard path. It's not easy, but um, it's, I guess, harder to arrive around 80 years old and look back to your life and, and see the disaster that, that um, you let happen by staying with someone that destroyed you just because you were taking pride in being resilient, confusing with strength. And there's another thing to look back uh, in life or over your life um, at the, at let's say an older age and look back and think, gosh, uh, I'm so glad I had the power to, to break that circle, that cycle and to, to leave and uh, look at all the great things that you create or create within yourself and around yourself with the right people that love and support you from you after you left, you know? So, so do what you have to do to get yourself back together because you can do it. Okay, and last but not least, chapter 11, um, you are what you constantly do. So you are what you constantly do it's not a mystery anymore that sometimes our biggest enemy is our own mind. For this reason, even if we struggle to overcome our difficulties, the mind keeps putting us down, constantly reminding of us of our social and emotional context. Imagine that. Our own mind really works to put us down only if we let it, of course. One of the most common and accurate explanations regarding this aspect of our, of our complex mind is that our brain always tends to be in the fight or flight mode. In fact, our brain tends to perceive effort as danger and for this reason, our attempts to learn and put in the effort to do certain things is soon demolished by thoughts of fear, anxiety and the voices of those who have, of those who have mocked us a long time. Another interesting and relevant saying is that until we won't be aware of our subconscious, it will dictate our life and we will call it fate. I don't think I've heard a more powerful phrase than this one. So we are what we constantly do. So we, if we constantly stay in an unhealthy environment, we become unhealthy. If we constantly, um, I don't know, um, drink or do drugs or do these kind of things, we become a drug for our own self. We become unhealthy for our own personal um, identity. If we, um, if in change, we go back to study, we work on things, we um, uh, try to do the right thing, we um, go towards an artistic side and we cultivate an ability or a hobby, something we like to do. And even if you say, you may be thinking, oh, I don't have any skill, you find it. 
find it or get one. It's not, it's not possible. We all are gifted so, so much and it's really not possible to not have any gift at all. Take some courses, do some counseling, go to counseling, to vocational counseling and see um, or look for videos, other videos about how you can uh, find your, your hobbies and your abilities if necessary. But just simply or just simply take a pen and paper and write down what you like to do as a child and you will um, discover great things about you, I'm sure. Because um, it's, you know, we are what we feed ourselves in the end. It doesn't matter if it's uh, about uh, work, talents, um, abilities, um, uh, our environment, whatever it might be. Um, we are what we do. In the same way that we are what we eat, what we listen, what we read, and so on and so forth. But we, you are what you constantly do, and make sure that you become, um, you, you become the best uh, that you can be, and not in an um, exaggerated way, but try to become the best that you can be by doing the best things that are for you, by doing the best for you. Be your own parrot in the end, as um, I think Mel Robbins, or I, I hope I don't know his name, says this thing, be your own parent. At 18, no one comes to uh, clean, to make you clean the house. No one um, um, tells you to shut down the TV. No one tells you to get up and exercise or ride at beauty stand or do whatever. No one comes to save you. No one comes to do those things for you. Uh, and you have to be your own parent and push yourself to do, um, to do the best that you can and to become what you do, what you constantly do while doing what's best for you. Because if you would have a child that you don't have, or if you would look at, at yourself as a child, or you probably, if you are one of those who has children, you want the best for them, right? You want them to be healthy, fine, to engage in great interactions, to to be there at their best. So if you want that for them and for every other person around you, why wouldn't you want the same from you? Take, take some value from that and take it as a food for thought and try to want the best for yourself and see how things will change for you. And uh, do, do what's best for you and become the best um, that you can be. Uh, right where you are with what you have and uh, with uh, what you can do at that particular moment. Uh, um, so the last part here, I would say it's just getting to art. So having a troubled past can be really challenging at times, but each of us is gifted with different abilities and talents, you know, and talents. In order to overcome pain and sorrow, one needs to transfer that negative energy into something real. One needs to materialize the experience. By doing so, it's like moving the experience out of yourself and placing it into the immediate environment. This, in fact, creates a certain level of detachment from the experience and transforms what happened to me into what I did with what happened to me. This makes that action to become something useful, admirable, and somehow successful. Works on changing the story one tells to himself and uh, a fact which becomes a huge and positive turning point in the life of, of that person. So, so yeah, uh, the, um, the thing is that our abilities and talents and whatever gifts we have are there to help us materialize our pain among other things. And as I said um, in, uh, in another video, the goal or the whole point of materializing our pain to a uh, form of art is not only to heal, but to give us purpose and to transfer those emotions from inside to an outside um, to a, an outside object, let's say, in a healthy way, and not through yelling, not through consuming uh, drugs of any sort, not to to living a promiscuous life, but to, um, to, to building something, to offering something, 
to uh, transferring that energy into a painting or writing um, an ability of some sort, um, cooking, I don't know, <laughs> making videos if you may, um, whatever, whatever, whatever uh, way you can find that is healthier than um, going towards any so other sort of addiction. Uh, it's a chance that you give yourself to break the cycle of addiction and to break the cycle of um, bad habits that keep you low in life, okay? So I see my nose is itching me. I would end uh, the video here, to be honest. Uh, this was the ADAT theory, the purpose of life and the ADAT theory, the world and decision ability and talent and how to work in the fruit of senses to art. Uh, the book also contains my life story and a study and answers to that study. And uh, maybe I will read from the study also some other day tomorrow. Maybe I have graphs here and answers and whatever eyes you can find. <laughs> okay. Again, this is the book. Okay. I hope you, you found the. Um, this video was useful. Uh, to be honest, I pushed myself really hard because I postponed a lot making them. I mean, so I'm not, I'm not always at my best uh, either, but I'm doing this because I know we all struggle and I know that uh, we all need to be motivated somehow, starting with ourselves with me, right? And um, as I said, you can find this, um, this book on Amazon uh, in both paperback and the uh, Kindle version. I thank you for following me, for watching the videos, for um, paying attention to, to what I've just said. I hope you will find a lot of value here. Um, I aim for building a beautiful community, but who knows if my motivation will stay high enough for that. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Give me your feedback in the comments, whatever you want to say, but say nice things, bad and uh, ugly comments or words will be deleted. Uh, and uh, make yourself proud and be great and push yourself one step at a time to get better because I know that you can. Take care, bye.